So in this uh, video, I'll be doing um, a series of questions regarding the chapter of transformation. So I was thinking, because you guys don't have much time, instead of teaching you basic concepts, why not just go directly to the questions, and by doing the questions and showing you the concepts at the same time, so that you can be sure that you understand, and also you know how to do the questions at the same time. So this will be the first of the six questions I'll be posting and I will leave uh, obviously links to the other questions in the comments below. So let's move on to the first question. So this one, as you can see, we have a graph. We have the x-axis and the y-axis. And here we have shape A and shape B. Okay, that's the first thing we can see. Now, part one, we have to describe fully the enlargement. So now we know it is an enlargement given by the question that maps A onto B. So what can what kind of enlargement maps A onto B? So the first thing you have to know is that how do you describe an enlargement? So enlargement is described by a center of enlargement. So we need that center and then also we need a scale factor to describe an enlargement. So Basically, let me write this down. So you will have first to write uh, it is an enlargement, right, with scale factor, scale factor. So we don't know, we have to find this. And center as well, we don't know yet, we have to find this, which is the point. So this is how you would write or describe an enlargement. You have to find these two things as well. For your two marks, as you can see here, you will be awarded. So how can you first find the scale factor? So pretty easy. We can just compare the sides. For example, we know that A was mapped onto B. So look at this side. So this side was one unit. So when it was transformed to B, it became one, two. So how do you change 1 to 2? You have to multiply by 2. So the scale factor has to be 2, if that makes sense. Now, we can also double check How about this one. It was 1, 2. And now we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So how do you change 2 to 4? You multiply by 2. So we confirm that indeed the scale factor is 2. OK, that is part 1. So now we have to find the center of enlargement. So how would you find that? So here the easiest way is to do this. So you have to use a ruler, obviously. And since I don't have one, I'll be using this one, this piece of paper. So the idea is that is we have to use two corresponding points. So what do I mean? So this point here, when you map to point to shape B, it is equal to this point. So this is the corresponding two points. So these two are the corresponding points. So the first thing, we have to join them. Let's see where they go. So that's the first step. Join the two points and see where they will go. Okay. That's the first thing. Now that's the first corresponding points. Now we have to choose another one. For example, I can choose these points. I can choose this one. And where is the corresponding point? We know this is equal to this point in the shape of B. So join these two and see where does it go. Okay, so you will see by joining these two, you will have a point where they meet. So wherever they meet, that is your point or center of enlargement. So the point is 7, 1 will be your center of enlargement. That is question part 1. For your two marks, as you can see, it is not that hard. So step by step, you are able to find that. Now for part B, we have the shape A is now mapped onto shape C by a rotation 90 degrees clockwise will be in this direction, right? And center is 1, 0. Okay. So this question, we have two ways of doing that. One is by using matrix and one is by using the diagram. So we can try to uh, use both methods. So let's first try to look at the diagram. So first let's mark your center. 
Your center is 1, 0, so 1, 0 will be this one, right? Now, we have to rotate each and every point by 90 degrees. So we can easily do this one because it is directly up, right, these two points. If you rotate 90, that should be well. That will be right here, right, because you have 1, 2, 90, 1, 2. This will become right here. That makes sense. So these two points will become right here. This is done by observation, as you can see. Or you can use a compass. You can make your life easy as well. Use a compass to measure and find those corresponding points as well. Now, how about this one? So this will be, so we have one, one, two. So we can do the same thing. That will be one, and then one, two. That should be right here. In this case, yep, that should be. Rotation, if you think, that will be moving in this direction. So someone like this, right? It will be here. So if you think, look, if you do that as well, rotate 90 degrees, the shape should look something like that. But because the point is not 0, 0, it will be here. We have to look at this way. It will be just below the x-axis in this direction. So just like that, by observation, we can plot this. That will be here. And we should just we have to join those points. So you have to use a ruler here, obviously, to make those straight lines. Okay, that is one way of doing that question. That is your shape C. So again, you can just use your finger. You can place your finger at the point, the center one O, and think of this as the rotation 90 degrees will be what it will be in this direction. Clockwise, it will stop right here. Now, because the center is not 0, 0, it is here, we look at this as the x-axis. So basically, the shape will need to be just below the x-axis in this way. So now, if you revert back, it will be the same thing. Below the x-axis will be this way. But that is one way of doing that question. It is not my favorite way of doing that, obviously, because I like to use calculation. And I like to confirm that, hey, you know what, I, I, I use calculation. I know that it, it has to be good. So I like that kind of confirmation. So how would I proceed with doing this question? So the main idea is that when we have to perform a transformation, we have to think about matrix times object give you image. Now here the image is C. We are trying to find C. Object is A. So we apply the matrix on A to get C. So matrix now is a rotation 90 degrees. So this is my main equation that we have to use. Now you have to understand, this is only possible if your center is 0, 0. But right now my center is 1, 0. So what can we do? So we have to change something. So first thing first, what are the coordinates of my shape A? So let's write this down. So we can just observe from the diagram and look at the points of my shape A. So one by one. Let me write this down. So A has been given by what? By? By uh, 1, 2. By uh, 2, 2. By 3, 3. And by 1, 3. So these are the points of, of A. Now, because the center here is not 0, 0, I have to minus the given center. So minus 1, 0 from every one. So that will give you? a fake shape A with center, rotation center 0, 0. So for example, right now, it, it is just a process of trying to negate that center 1, 0. So first minus the center, that will give you what? 0, 1, 2, 0. That will be 2, 2, 3, 3. Now, this is my new A that we have to use in that equation because that equation can only be used when the center is 0, 0. Now we apply. What is the matrix for rotation 90 degrees clockwise? Now, if you guys did not memorize this, no problem. We can go back to understand how do you find this. So to find the matrix, rotation, reflection, we always use this method. For example, we begin with the axis. Now, this is, this is the method. If you don't remember, you can use that, right? So we always begin with this point. This is your point. 1, 0. And second point will be, this point is 0, 1. 
Now we also have to mark these points, which is 0, minus 1. And then this point here, that will be minus 1, 0. But we have to begin with this one first and then this one. So the idea here is you have to ask yourself, if you were to rotate this point by 90 degrees clockwise, what would happen to this point? If you think, this point will become this point, right? So you write down matrix. We know this point became this point, so we have to write down this point as your answer, 0 minus 1. Now next point we have to look at is this one. If you were to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise, it will move down to this point. So this became this. This is your resulting point. Write down 1, 0. So as you can see, this matrix right here is your rotation clockwise about the center OO 90 degrees. So this is how you can derive your matrix for rotation and reflection. So now we know this matrix, we know this, what do we do? Replace in my formula. So pretty easy. As you can see, it will be rotation first, that will be 0 minus 1, 1, 0, times A, which is these points now, which is 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, 3. Now let's find the answer for that. So that will be this time this plus this time this, that will be 2. Same steps, so rows by column, because here we have 0. We understand that everything will be 0 here. We just have to show those numbers. So that will be uh, 2, 3, and 3. Here we have minus 1. This is 0, so we have to understand this will be 0. So that will be 0, minus 1, minus 2, 0. So that will be the resulting matrix that we have for C. But now, this is not your answer. Why? Because as you have seen here, we have actually minus the center initially. So to obtain your answer for that, we have to add back the center 1, 0 to obtain the answer. So let's do that. That will become 3, 0. That will become uh, 3 minus 1. That will become 4 minus 2 and 4, 0. So these will be your coordinates of the shape C. Now we can check. Let's check to see if this is OK on the diagram. So here we have what? So first one is 3, 0. So 3, 0, good. Then we have 3 minus 1, 3 minus 1, good. 4 minus 2, 4 minus 2, good. And then 4, 0, 4, 0, perfect. So we confirm that this was OK. And this is OK through calculation. That is part B of the question. Now let's move on to part C of the question. Now here we have a transformation P. It is represented by this matrix. So right now we don't know what it is, but that's OK. It's not a big deal. So it says that P maps A onto D. So you have to find D. So again, here we have to use the formula that we have understood. Matrix times object is image. The matrix here is 0, minus 1, minus 1, 0. The object is A, right? A is the points, as we have seen. It is 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, and 1, 3. Now let's see what is the image, which is a shape D. What are the points of shape D? So let's do rows by column. That will be minus 2, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 3. And that will become minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 1. So these will be the, the points or the coordinates of shape D. Let's draw and label this on the diagram. So first will be minus 2, minus 1. That will be right here. And we have minus 2, minus 2 right here. Minus 3, minus 3. That should be here. And we have minus 3, minus 1. That should be right here. Now, of course, you have to use a ruler and join those points by straight lines. And don't forget to label this diagram by D. So this will be the resulting shape shown on the diagram. But of course, you have to show this here for your marks, that you know how to use matrix multiplication or the formula to find the answer. Now, for part two, we have to describe the single transformation P. Okay, so this one is interesting. So how can you 
change A to D. So I think usually through practice, you can see this really fast. However, if you don't know, you can proceed by elimination, for example. So right now you have to learn four kind of transformation. So we have translation, we have uh, rotation, we have enlargement, and we have reflection. So by elimination, we know this one will not be a translation. Why? Because the orientation or the, or the, the shape has changed sides. So translation will not be possible. Now rotation might be possible. Enlargement, not really, it's the same size, so that will not be the answer. So we have rotation and reflection. We can check if you see, if you uh, can observe, it's very obvious that it will be a reflection. Why? If you rotate your shape in this way, you can clearly see that if you were to draw a line here, right? This is my line, y equal to a minus x, sorry. So now if you see, the point A here, this point become 1 half, half 1. That was 1, 2, 1, 2. That was 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. So you can confirm already that it is a reflection. So by doing this, you know it is a reflection. You don't need to bother with this you can just confirm that it is a reflection. So, now how would you describe reflection? So, very easy. You can write this down. P is a reflection. So that's your first point that you identify the transformation. Now in the line, you have to mention the line of reflection as well. As we have seen it is y equal to minus x. According to our observation, this is what we have found. So this one is the first question. So please go down below in the comment section. I will leave the links for the next five questions in this series of questions regarding transformation.